we delve into the murky waters of male circumcision among street boys in the Kenyan capital Nairobi. One that takes us deep into the heart of Madara slums where many street boys face the knife and are brought back to the streets, nursing serious infections on their private parts. So dire is a situation that it has already seen one street boy lose his life. Katie's Timothy Otieno brings you Knife of Greed, the story of plight of vulnerable street children in Nairobi. The bustling streets of Nairobi introduces you to the modern day African metropolis where everyone and everything is on the move. It's a fast-paced lifestyle that most city dwellers are used to. The businesses within the city, both formal and informal, contribute largely to the country's gross domestic product. During the day, the vibrance of East Africa's largest capital is manifested in the crowded streets and busy highways. At night, a different mold emerges, one adorned by street families and their constant battle with local authorities. Their numbers hard to determine, but what isn't is the fact that they face numerous hazards on a daily basis. It's our quest to highlight such risks that led us to meet 14-year-old Isaac Maina, who subtly maneuvers his way around the busy streets late for a doctor's appointment. Once we get to the clinic in downtown Nairobi, it doesn't take him long before he falls asleep on one of the clinic's benches. He straddles his legs because he's breathing in pain. A minor surgical procedure conducted on him on the 8th of February, deep in the heart of Madhara slums, has landed him back in hospital. He's a 14-year-old boy who was brought in by a uh, well-wisher. And uh, on examination we found out that uh, he had a uh, uh, septic wound post circumcision, uh, meaning there was infection where he was, uh, you know, where the cut is. And again, I realized that uh, the type of sutures, sutures is uh, what we use to close the wound, huh? the one of the right ones. The well-wisher in question is Genwa Muyu, who found Isaac on the streets of Nairobi with a serious infection in his private parts. This little boy walked in in my shop on 11th, it around, uh, it was in, in the morning, around 11 there. Then when he came, he was crying. I tried to ask him, why are you crying? He could not talk. Then he was pointing his private parts. So I asked him, ni nini umeumwa, umefanya nini? Akaniambia pana, kuna mtu alitupeleka kutairishwa madhare. And I asked him, who is this? He could not talk. And then I realized this boy looks sick. You know, I'm a mother and I can be able to tell someone who is sick. So I looked at him, I touched him, he had very high fever. So my first thing that I could have done is to like give him first aid and then get a colleague to check on him. Jane recruited the help of her friend Daniel Mugo who made the discovery that Isaac's circumcision had gone terribly wrong. Praying here. Kapimu wa kiro ni kwa na kiro na tatu. Kanda. 
tukaanza kuitwa moja moja mimi nilikuwa haraya sita wa mwisho atailisha akadunga sindano kuzaa kusikia uchungu hiyo ya kugandisha tukaanza akaingisha makasi karibu saba Mugo and Jane would then rush the young boy to Dr. Wasike who noticed defects in the manner in which Isaac had been circumcised. The whole thing was not uh, done in a very professional way and uh, that's how infection set in. His wound had a severe infection and the fact that he lived on the streets did not make the situation any better. But today, weeks after Isaac received assistance, Dr. Wasike gives him a clean bill of health saying the young man is now well on his path to recovery. Isaac takes us to one of the areas he hangs out with his friends in downtown Nairobi. His friends tell us that Isaac is just one among the many street children who go for circumcision on a weekly basis. This young boy, whom we'll refer to as Tony, is one of the lead players in the hierarchy of street children who dictate who hangs out along which street. He admits that he's been able to facilitate some of the young boys in the streets to go for circumcision at a particular clinic located in Madhari slums. <laughs> but Isaac's case is not isolated. We make our way to Banana Town. At this children's home in the heart of Kiambu County lives 70 street children, most brought to this center after being rescued from the harsh conditions on the streets. Among that group is an eight-year-old child whom we'll call Anthony. Anthony has special visitors today. It's a group who rescued and brought him here a few days back. Anthony arrived here courtesy of the help of a good Samaritan, Genwa Muyu, who also rescued Isaac a few weeks earlier. Together with a group of her friends, she has been able to see Anthony recuperate after also undergoing an unsafe circumcision at the same facility in Madare. You remember it started with the first boy, who is now well, and uh, he went back to the street and he brought me two other boys. One of them is Anto. But Anto was badly off. He was very sick, he could not walk. And the only thing I would have done is to get him somewhere to sleep. Anthony is not too talkative. Life on the streets for such a young child, perhaps weighing heavy on him and preventing him from having a normal upbringing. He tells me he ran away from home after his mother banned him from playing with his friends. It's been months since he left their house in Dandora. According to the director of the center, Juvenalis Chalo, Anthony's case is not a rare one. He has in the past rescued many young boys who fall terribly ill after what he sees as reckless circumcision. Boys in the streets are circumcised forcefully by people and then they are left. And I remember 2007 I had two cases of such and I picked them from the streets in, the in spite of the situation they were. 
I took them in and that's the time the burden of circumcising the boys came in. So this one, like this one incident that happened the other day, it's something I personally know. It happens and it has been happening and there are so many cases unreported which go unnoticed. Even most, most likely some boys end up dying because circumcision is not an easy process. And uh, like this one, when I had the phone call from the people who took the boy, I didn't hesitate to say no. I just told them, you know what, bring the boy in. Both Anthony and Isaac confirmed to us that six of them had been taken for circumcision in early February to that particular clinic. Out of the six, five of them each got an infection and one child unfortunately passed away. <laughs> But to find out exactly what clinic was conducting these deadly surgeries, we needed Isaac and his friend as our guide with two detectives in plain clothes. Upon our arrival, Isaac and his friend lead us through the slum alleys to this area with a makeshift iron sheet fencing. Inside, we find a fully operational medical center at the first floor of a residential building. <laughs> From the outside, this five-story building looks like a normal residential area located in the heart of Madare slums. But according to the many boys that we spoke to, the first floor of this building houses the Fikiria Jami Medical Center where most of the circumcision takes place. The staff here insisted that they did not have any recollection of Isaac or any other boy circumcised in the facility, insisting that we should instead visit their head office in Donholm for detailed records. Mm -hmm. You'll get our managers there as well. Okay, you, you go and explain. If you want to go with the boy, if it's okay. Yeah. 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 That's where we operate from. But Isaac remained adamant that his circumcision took place behind these doors where him alongside five others faced the knife. The man behind the infectious procedure identified as 36-year-old Gilbert Anzala Masahwe. And apparently whoever does the circumcision does not do it professionally because those boys go back with infection Okay. According to the street kids, some have even passed away as a result of, mm. of the injections and the procedure that is taking place here. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are here.
Gilbert was subsequently arrested facing charges of unintentionally causing harm to a minor and possible involuntary murder. Gilbert denied ever seeing Isaac but admitted to conducting circumcision on several other street boys only that you would not recall their faces. Can so you want to I've talk to the person in charge to come, give us... Come, you give me the name. You know, you the Fikiria Jami Medical Center with about 14 branches countrywide insists that they do not conduct unlawful circumcision. You know we are there to help these people. Mm. They need to because we don't charge anything. It's a free service. Okay. Yeah? Okay. okay. So if there is anybody who has got an issue, we are able to find it as facility. Uh, if uh, somebody has got uh, an infection or anything in the development, they're able to handle it at facility level. The medical center refutes claims that the hospital solicits for funds from donors to conduct these circumcisions. They also deny having any knowledge of any boy from the streets dying following an infection as a result of being circumcised at their facility. I don't say somebody died and we don't have any of that report. Okay. Yeah? So, if you were circumcised at our facility, when they developed uh, an infection, our facility is able to handle it. So, the best thing is for them maybe to come at the facility and check on, uh, because they have all the drugs, even for antibiotics or for handling infection. But young ones like Isaac Maina and Anthony are lucky to be alive. I only helped one. Where are the rest? Who is helping them? I only helped one get medical attention. This infection can go further and even kill these boys. Where are the rest? I want even the government and anyone to chip in and help us understand why is this done by well-wishers and not done by the government. His luck perhaps growing even greater after through the help of Jane, we managed to locate his mother who last saw him nearly six months ago. Isaac says he ran away after he failed to do his homework and was fearful of the repercussions from his teachers. And so the long journey to Embu Town to reunite mother and son begins. And when we arrive at their humble homestead after dark, we find Isaac's mother Jane Wangare preparing tea for his son and his guests. Isaac's two younger sisters are preparing for school, but all activities here have been halted to welcome back the proverbial prodigal son. <laughs> Niko na awa, wanataka school fees, niko na mwingine special school, na ya likuwa anataka mimi. Na nilikuwa niende, niende, na ito nini, visit, sasa nikasindua. Nambi wa maina kona irombi, nitaenda kumuchukua ama nitaenda kuona uyo wako special school. Rosemary Wanjiru and Anne Derry can now have more time to bond and play with their brother. They are related. Isaac's tremendous journey from running away from home to living on the streets and then facing the knife that almost cost him his life up to now when he retraces his steps back home coming full circle for a 14 year old who has perhaps already seen too much and been through it all. <laughs> A 14-year-old who for some time represented the plight of the young ones living on our streets, vulnerable to many risks. Before you even give him that money, 
ask him ulitoka nyumbani kwa nini let him tell you because i have changed to i have managed to take two to hospital we have with my friends managed to take two three boys to hospital that is a whole generation that we have saved if family setups can be set in a way that a family can adopt a boy or a girl this is something that can be worked on because 40 million Kenyans I don't think the families are more than 300,000 they are less so if we have 40 million Kenyans probably 20 million and up they can adopt one boy or one girl in each home and that way they will be supporting the boy to go to school the girl to go to school and they'll be mentoring this boy they'll be mentoring this girl and in 10 years to come they'll see the fruits of that particular boy because with 70 boys I have seen the fruits has it been easy no it has been hard work and because he has been hard work I'm seeing the fruits and it is workable and it can work. I would like to request anyone who is watching this to go out the street and make sure in a day you feed one street boy. Because what they look for, it's not what people think they are looking for. They are not out there to steal, to kill or to do anything. They are looking for love. Because me, I have experienced it. I have no boys street boys walking in and out of my shop because in me they have seen love and I have seen that the only thing that can change these boys is love nothing else Timothy Otieno KTN News